Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun, and this is our trailer reaction and breakdown for FX's Grotesquerie, the new horror show from none other than executive producer Ryan Murphy. Mm -hmm. American Horror Story is still happening. For those of you being like, where's season 13? It's already been renewed. It's just, it's not coming in the near future, but we are getting Grotesquerie. Yeah, which feels so far from seeing this trailer, like, you know, this could be really good. Like, if you're looking for your horror fix, Grotesquerie has it. We also have some other horrors that are going to be coming up. We're going to be covering From and The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon. There's another horror coming up on Peacock called Teacup. Like, yeah. there's, there's a lot of horror coming up. So, in no American horror story, but there is so <laughs> many other yeah. ways to eat this season when you want some horror and Grotesquerie grotesquerie is definitely at the top of my list i mean ryan murphy first season shows I know. <laughs> they're they're usually a 10 out of 10 like yeah it kind of like you know ebbs and flows and whatever <laughs> later on throughout the seasons but first season ryan murphy is great yeah and it seems like he's pretty invested in making this show into a big deal like yeah. he's very involved he's involved in this more than he was involved on this past season of American Horror Story. He's got some people. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, he's got some people on this show in particular who he's very familiar working with. You know, Nisi Nash at Betsy. You know, he worked with her on Monster. Yep. So, you know, he, she, there's so a. So good. Yeah, he, he's got a good working relate. Courtney B. Vance was on People vs. OJ Simpson. Like, there's a lot of people <laughs> on this show who he knows very well. We've got a very interesting setting based on what we've seen in the trailer the visuals the stylistic quality it looks really really cool the color palette on this show with all the like purples and reds and stuff it just looks so good like it, yeah. they've definitely created a feel with the color palette of the show already just from the trailer but yeah before we get too much further into it make sure you hit that subscribe button like i said we have all kinds of other horror shows that are going to be coming up here we're going to be covering grotesquerie every single week mm -hmm. here so hit that subscribe button it helps support us here at the channel thank you so much and you can support us further by five dollars a month joining our patreon <laughs> we have a link in the description below and mm -hmm. over there you can vote on polls and those will help us to figure out what sort of videos and content we want to provide to you guys thank you so much thank you for those who have you have supported us okay so grotesquery yeah. it premieres wednesday september 25th so this is coming up pretty soon it's not that far out no it's it's not that far out and you know first and foremost we're, we're just gonna set the table a little bit of what this show is and it seems to be very much in this sort of crime meets horror sort of world mm -hmm. where we have nisi nashbets who is playing this sort of detective like character who suddenly finds herself at the center of a dark and twisted case where her past may be involved, but there's a lot of other questions as to what sort of forces of evil are at work. Yeah, it's you've got this detective, Lois is who she's going to be playing, and she's going to be working with this nun, and yeah. they're going to be trying to figure out this case of this killer who is, you know, killing a bunch of people, and, you know, why it has this... The trailer really, and even the plot, has a lot of feelings of connections to Seven, which is one of my favorite movies mm -hmm. ever, where there's a religious aspect to it that is also this detective thriller to it. There's also a little bit of a personal thing going on, as Matt mentioned. You know, yeah. Lois might have some personal connections going on as she's going through this case, and it's unraveling, and she's seeing these little personal things that are being connected to herself it's you know it gets her deeper and deeper almost like brad pitt's character over on seven <laughs> and there is this fundamental question watching the trailer too as you're seeing a lot of this like religious imagery and you're seeing a lot of this really dark imagery like this is right. a pretty crazy trailer when oh it comes that to some meat of grinder ah, no like it's who's in that i don't know oh, no okay no this it really feels like this is going to be one of those shows where we're kind of constantly questioning what is real, what is not real. I mean, maybe it's a little similar to Evil on Paramount Plus that way, but I'm I'm fine with all of that if you can find a way to really sort of pay this off, because I think what is at the center of grotesquery is something very, very sinister. And I think that's for now, I, I'm really into the idea of believing Lois and believing what she is seeing and what she's trying to take on. I think one of her big challenges is 
if she is seeing things as she tries to uncover the truth that nobody else is? How do how do you convince them, especially in this modern world where everybody just wants to believe whatever they want to believe and they refuse to listen to anybody else. Yeah. Cause that's one of the things that she said in the voiceover in this trailer of sort of the idea of she's seeing things that no one else is seeing. Yeah. And that could be taken a bunch of different ways after watching this trailer, right? Like there's all these sort of things that are morphing or demons or, you know, all these otherworldly things are those the things that she's seeing that no one else is seeing or is it her as a detective that is seeing things in this case that no one else is seeing because things are personal to her and that she's being able to pluck some of these things ideas clues out of the case because there's a personal connection there as well that's the one of the big questions i have going into this that we have her working with a nun because there seems to be a religious aspect yeah. a little bit like seven and the seven deadly sins that the killer was following in that we have that here as well and it kind of makes me wonder if there's going to be a little bit of a push and pull in Nisi Nash's character of, you know, faith versus reality of what she can see and, you know, what's tangible to her. And is she someone who's maybe been struggling with faith and now this has all come in, you know, it's, it, it could be there. Yeah. And I think these are good questions the show could be asking because these are questions <laughs> that are still ambiguous to a lot of people out there. And I think one of the best things that a Ryan Murphy show can do at this point is have some real debate because there are some seasons of American horror story that end in just like a blatantly obvious and at times bad way that you can't really talk about anything other than just how bad it was. Like last season that started out so I good know. and then delicate just went raining off a cliff. Yeah. I think ambiguity here can be good, but you know, speaking of things that will inspire debate, it's time to have the Travis Kelsey conversation here i will start <laughs> i will start by saying that you know i i like travis kelsey i think his hosting gig on snl was really fun his sketch about the american girl store is kind of terrifying um but i think he is very game he's willing to do a, a lot of different things you know i also like Mahomes. i'm not a kansas city chiefs fan i just i like my homes i like kelsey but anyway i just feel like He's going to be okay on this show. I know there's a lot of concerns about Ryan Murphy and his stunt casting. And I mean, we went over it on Delicate with Kim Kardashian. She was and, great. Yeah. Like, I'd never seen her in anything before. It was my first time seeing her. She was great. Yeah. Like she was not the problem with no, Delicate. Like, no. you know, I, you know, we, I, I may not be the, just the biggest overall fan of her, but like, she was not the problem with Delicate. The problem with Delicate <laughs> was the story. And I think that if Travis Kelsey has a good role on this show, I think he's going to be fine. Like it's clear that he really wants to get more into this after he retires. And so I think he, I think he took this role seriously. I know really nothing about Travis, except that his girlfriend is Taylor Swift. That's mm -hmm. really all I know. I don't watch sports at all. I'm a non-athlete and I don't watch <laughs> any athletes. So I don't really know anything about him. I haven't seen him on SNL either. Mm -hmm. So I'm going in with just a, totally open mind to him see see what he's all about i know there's people out there that are like ah oh, whatever you know stunt casting that's that's fine i don't have a problem with that if he's good in the role so yeah. let's tinfoil hat everybody get your tinfoil I'm, hats on. i'm ready after watching this trailer i did a little digging i went into imdb which is not always that reliable so take this with a grain of salt it says that he's going to be in all 10 episodes that's fine. Mm -hmm. He's in this trailer one time and the scene that he's in, he is filling out the entire frame. You can't see anything behind him, nothing above him, nothing around him. It's just his face and like his hands. Very purposeful. Yeah. And it feels like the reason why. And with him being in this many episodes, every episode, we know that this story is about basically three people. We have the detective, we have the nun, and we have the killer. I think that he's the killer and that we're going to learn pretty early on that he is. And it's going to be sort of like a a race against each other of is Lois going to be able to get the clues together and, you know, pull apart this web to be able to get to him before he's killing other people and going forward. Because how are you going to cast somebody that has so much like notoriety around them? Mm -hmm. You're going to put them in 10 episodes and you're going to have them in the trailer one time and you're not going to show anything around them. I think he's the killer. 
I I think it it makes sense if he's the killer. I think it's a good it's a good theory, and I think good it, meaty role. It's a good meaty role for somebody who is clearly excited about doing good meaty roles right now. Mm-hmm. He was able to film it at a time in which you know football season wasn't going on, mm-hmm. and I think it would excite him to play a bad guy because I think his persona is kind of very goofy. But this is a pretty he's a pretty big guy he's mm-hmm. an imposing guy you put him in the right environment i think it can work really well mm-hmm. i do you know i agree with you in the sense that i don't think that this show you know we love doing whodunits i mean we're we're doing Amer- only murders in the building right now yeah. but i also feel like this is not really going to be a whodunit i think it's going to be pretty clear fairly early on who the killer is and if you want to really get people hooked on this you have Travis Kelsey be the killer. Like, you know, you can call it stunt casting. You can call it whatever you want. But Ryan Murphy wants people to watch his shows. Like, that's a really important thing. And you better believe there are going to be a lot of either Taylor Swift fans or yep. Kelsey fans yep. who are going to be watching the show because of that. And I, yep. I what people watching scripted TV is not a bad thing to me. It is great. It is, let's continue to push this medium forward in a way that's not just, oh, everybody has Netflix. It's it's something different. I'm excited about that. I just think that Ryan Murphy and his stunned casting is still has meat on that bone. He's not doing it with just like, oh, I'm just going to put in Kim Kardashian because she's a controversial person and not everybody likes her. She was, you know, fine in that role. She was the best part of that season. I'd never seen her in anything. So I can't say for anything else that she's done. And it's the same here with Travis. I don't think that he's putting Travis in this role. If he sucks at it, Mm -hmm. he's not going to do that to himself. No, especially with the quality of talent that he's got elsewhere on this show. Like, you know, Nisi's been great in other stuff with Ryan Murphy. Like, I have... He was so good in Monster. Yeah, I I really feel like there is a good opportunity for her to shine in this. I just think, in general, if you want horror, if you want to kind of descend into what seems like a very, you know, broken down, mysterious environment where all these super or pseudo-supernatural things are happening, Mm -hmm. I think this show really has potential to hit on all of that. I, I just hope that it lives up to it. And it also lives up to every other season one Ryan Murphy show that we're at least going to start strong. Yeah, I hope so too. I I feel good about it. All right. Well, we will be back to discuss grotesquerie. I'm really excited to get into the meat of this story, what it really, really is. But for now, hit that subscribe button. Remember, we have so many other horror related shows that Mm -hmm. are coming from Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, Teacup, and you can support us further by joining our Patreon for $5 a month. Help us. Decide our future coverage. Thank you to our patrons. We'll see you here next time.